On the western edge of Scripps Ranch, just off I-15, crews are assembling a 10-story building made out of mass timber. The product is made by joining several planks of wood together, usually with glue, to form large structural panels and beams. They are first uh, fabricated uh, by gluing plywood together. You can still see the same. Xi Ling Pei is an engineering professor with the Colorado School of Mines. This building won't ever be inhabited. It's a research experiment Pei is leading to test how mass timber responds to earthquakes. The building's walls are specially designed to move and absorb energy. It's built on something called a shake table. In February, it'll mimic earthquakes of increasing intensity, as shown here from a smaller scale experiment in 2017. I know our mass engineering is pretty solid, and we have good material. I think we're going to put on a good show, but uh, the reason we do research and the reason we do tests is uh, we don't know the full story. The main appeal of mass timber is environmental. Steel and concrete cost huge amounts of energy to produce. Mass timber, on the other hand, is made from a renewable resource grown by the sun. Trees capture carbon from the atmosphere and store it in their cells. That means sustainable production of mass timber can offset the burning of fossil fuels. Pei hopes his research will help the product go mainstream. In a way, we're playing a role to be a good educator for the public and for, for also building officials to say this is uh, totally feasible and there's a great benefit. Architects and engineers have always struggled with, you know, how do you build in a way that is actually positive for the environment? Jennifer Cover is president and CEO of Woodworks, a nonprofit that promotes mass timber. The building industry contributes about 40 percent of the total greenhouse gases globally um, to the environment. And if you look at just building materials alone, it's somewhere between 9 to 11 percent. This summer, California amended the building code to allow structures up to 18 stories tall made with mass timber. Cover says those updates came after research showed mass timber is remarkably resistant to fire. When exposed to flames, the solid piece of wood begins to char, and what that does is create an insulation level, um, insulation layer against uh, further heat damage. And so the wood is actually protected and itself extinguishes. Despite its potential to help decarbonize the building industry, mass timber remains something of a novelty in North America. But its popularity is growing fast. The building comes in through here and makes an L, and you're going to have an outdoor plaza. Alex Alamani shows me around a lot in North Park, where he's planning to build a five-story, 55-unit apartment building. It'll be a hybrid, with mass timber floors and ceilings, but conventional wood framing for the walls. Alamani estimates the mass timber is adding at least 15% to his construction costs. But he's betting future tenants will pay a premium for the aesthetic appeal. When you go in, you're going to see these huge exposed mass timber panels, right? completely unobstructed, uh, and you're going to have that nature element inside of your unit, kind of like you're in a wooden cabin. A lot will have to change before San Diego sees its first mass timber high-rise. Contractors with experience in mass timber are in short supply here. Alemani expects the material will have to catch on with large, deep-pocketed developers first. And the more and more of those larger-scale projects get accomplished with CLT or with mass timber, there's going to be a trickle-down effect to the mass market and the smaller projects. San Diego's Climate Action Plan briefly mentions mass timber as a more sustainable building material that the city should seek to incentivize. Exactly what those incentives will look like or when they'll take effect is unclear. In the meantime, Alemani says the city has to get more familiar with the material. He submitted his blueprints for review last December and is still waiting for a building permit. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.